Hey, Happy New Year, Christ community. Great to see you. Um, if I haven't met you yet, my name's Daryl Holden. I'm one of the pastors here. So great to be together. We're on the front end of this new year. I'm really glad that you are here the first weekend of the new year, and here we are. We get to be together. At the beginning of new year, you know, we're always thinking about, like, a lot of us think about, like, how am I gonna be healthier this new year? And um, your spiritual health is really important. And so we're taking care of our spiritual health. You know, being in church, being part of the church is one of the leading indicators for people who are spiritually healthy. And so I mean, your presence here is important. It's important for you, and it's important for us as a church as we get to be together. You're, you're important to us. And so I'm really glad that we get to be together this weekend. Thanks for coming and being part of all this with us. So we're kicking off a series this week on, um, on prayer. And at Christ Community, one of the things that we say, we believe around here, that prayer is a first thing. We talk about, first of all, pray. That's the title of this series. And um, if you're a church person, I know that for church people, because I'm a church guy, I grew up in church, I know that, that prayer comes, like when somebody's talking about prayer, it comes with a lot, of, a lot of spiritual baggage for some of us. And so as we jump into that, I just wanna start by reminding us that um, the only way you mess up prayer is by not praying. Right? That's, that's the only way to mess up prayer, is by not praying. Prayer is talking with your Heavenly Father, and really the only way you can mess that up is by not praying, and there's some things that, that are part of our lives that, that conspire against us as it relates to prayer, but, but the only way you can mess up prayer is by not praying, and so the purpose of the series really is just to kind of call us into some next steps, to call us forward, to, to remind us, to help us, to encourage us to be people who, who pray together. So, so our lives, like there's some things in our lives that conspire against us for prayer, and I wanna talk into that, I'm gonna speak into that this weekend and really kinda help us work our way through some of those things. And I'm just taking, like there's just one word I think that summarizes a lot of what conspires against us when it comes to prayer, and that word is lassitude, right, lassitude. So I, I picked an unfamiliar word on purpose because any other word I think I would have picked that we already know the definition to has, has negative connotations with it. And so I don't want this to be a weapon for anybody about prayer, but as we, as we think about prayer and how our lives conspire against this lassitude, when you think about a barrier, the barriers in your life to you being a person who prays, lassitude, a state of physical or mental weariness, a lack of energy in our lives, like that's, that's one of the major barriers we face, right? Because almost everything in our lives conspires against us being people who pray. We, we work a lot of hours. It takes a lot of physical, emotional, relational energy for us. We spend time and energy building and maintaining relationships with other people so that we have community and so that we're able to make it through our lives. We live at a pace where it is just go, 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 go because of the way the world around us works. We live in a world where everything is important. Right, everything in your life, everything in my life, if it were an email, all of them have that little red exclamation point next to them that your boss puts when he or she sends an email out to you. Right? Like, that's, that's the way we live. We live in this life where, where everything is so important and when everything is important, we can't possibly get all the important things done. And so we, we drop important things from our life and we get used to dropping important things in our lives. And, and if we're not careful, prayer is one of those things that because we're tired and because we're busy, prayer is one of those things that can fall out of our lives. And, and so because prayer is one of those things that could fall out of our lives, we're gonna talk about it and raise the value of it, remind ourselves of how important prayer is for us as individual people, for us as a church, for, for us as a group of, of people, we're gonna talk about how important prayer is. So our main Bible verse for our time together this weekend was written by the Apostle Peter, and he wrote it to a group of people who used to live kind of in the same spot and around each other. And then, because of their faith in Jesus, persecution came and they scattered. And, and so, seeking peace in their lives, they scattered and, 
And Peter is one of the leaders. He knew kind of where they were, and so he wrote this letter that was going out to these people who were, who were living in, in the face of spiritual and relational difficulty as when it came to being a follower of Jesus. And so he writes this letter. We know it in the New Testament. It's towards the back of your Bible. It's called 1 Peter. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, there's this, there's this verse, and this is where I want us to spend a little bit of time together today. He writes this, this group of scattered Christian people are being persecuted for their faith. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. So let's just take that apart a little bit. So the end of all things is near. Time is short. Time's short. It is. In your life, time is short. In my life, time is short. In the Bible, when it talks to us about time being short, it's really speaking of two different things. The first thing is the Bible tells us that our individual lives is like, is like breath breathed on a cold day. Right? It's our individual lives, is like, it's like a vapor. Like here it is, and then it's gone. Time is short. When I was in high school, our football coach was a Christian guy, and he would say to us when he was trying to get us to move from one place to another to, to hurry up, quick like you live. Quick like you live, because your life is like a vapor. It's here, and then it's gone. And so, so time is short. For each one of us, time is short. And when the Bible's talking about time is short, the other thing, the second thing that's often talking about is Jesus made this promise to his followers. He says, hey, I'm going back to the Father, and I'm gonna be there, and then I'm coming to get you. And I will come, and he said, I'll come soon. He didn't give a date, he didn't give a time, he just said, hey, I'm coming, I'm coming back, and it's gonna be soon. And so the Bible's perspective and the perspective of Christian people for the last 2,000 years has been time is short because Jesus said he's coming and he's coming soon. And so, so time is short and, and Peter writing to people like you and me who live in a culture where everything is against us being people who pray and where it's hard to live as a follower of Jesus, he says, hey, time is short, therefore be alert, right? Be alert, because time is short, be alert. Don't be asleep, be alert. Be awake, be aware of what's happening, kind of not, not current events, be spiritually aware. Have your spiritual antenna up. Be, be spiritually alert and have a sober mind. And when he's talking about sober mind, like we, th we think in terms of being somber, and particularly because we're talking about prayer in this series, like that doesn't mean like you have a sour or somber look on your face and you have to be, you can't ever smile and you can't ever have any fun and you can't play back and forth. Even in the subject of prayer, he just be, be sober minded, know what the important things are and give the important things like places of priority in your life. Being sober minded, don't, don't get fooled by what is and isn't important. I know what the important things are and give those important things, like give them first place in your life. And so he says, the end of all things is near. Time is short, and because time is short, you gotta be alert, and you gotta have a sober mind, you gotta have awareness of what's important, and like, be paying attention to things. And then, and then he says, so that you can pray. So that you can pray. Now, this is, this is curious to me that he says this, because, like, hey, time is short, so so be alert and be of sober mind so that, and if, if you or I was gonna fill in that blank, if we were talking to somebody who we knew time for them was short, time is short, so like, hey, you're gonna make priorities for yourself, be sure and, like, if you were filling the blank, finish your bucket list, right? What are, what are those things, like the places you haven't seen that you wanna see or the people you haven't met that you'd like to meet or the things that you haven't yet done that you wanna do, like, time is short, so like, Get your bucket list filled in, or, or time is short, so make amends. You know, with the people who are in your circle and maybe things aren't like they ought to be, time is short, and so, so make amends. And if you and I were gonna fill in the blank that time is short, we would probably write something that's totally different than this. He says time is short, time is short, and so, so be alert and have a sober mind so that you could pray. And it's really curious to me, but I also think it's informative for us. This is, this is prayer's the first thing. 
Right, prayer's the first thing. Prayer's an important thing. If time is short, and, and time is short, and, and we're living on limited time, with limited time to do and to be and to know and to go, prayer. Like prayer becomes a thing, and so this, this prayer is the first thing in, in lives of people like you and me. If we're Christian people, what we gotta know is that, that prayer is one of those, it is a first thing for us. So time is short, we're told, so be alert, be of sober mind so that we could pray, and because, because prayer is a first thing, and because it, it lands in this really short list of things that people who have limited time are supposed to be about. I think this, I think this informs the way we think about prayer and the way that we practice prayer. And maybe it changes the way we approach prayer in our lives and, and we become people who pray with a level of alertness in our lives and with a level of passion and with a level of, of priority because time is short. These are things that we look for to be people who are engaged and who are focused and who are intentional about the way we pray. Now, if you're like me, one of the main things that happens to me when I pray is I kind of mumble off into sleep, right? You start and you pray for however long and then because it's a, it's a restful, peaceful presence of God kind of thing, you, you pray and then you, you fall off asleep and especially if you're a person who ends your day with prayer, like it's one of the things that happens to us is we, we mumble off to sleep. I think there is, I think there is a place for that. I, I believe your heavenly father loves to be the last thing, the last one you're talking to in the end of a day, and I believe he loves when you mumble off to sleep in your prayers. If you're like me, when you pray during the day, not sleepy, you, you start off, if you're driving to work, or if you're on your knees at the house before you go anywhere, or if you're taking a break at work during lunch or whatever, and you spend some time praying, you start off praying. And the next thing you know, you're thinking about the game that happened last night or the one that's coming up today or that conversation that you had or what's going on with your kids or your grandkids. Like, do you guys experience this in your life too? You begin to pray and, and the next thing you know, you're like, you're, you're onto something totally different. You're not engaged in your prayer life. I think there's grace for that. I mean, God knows that we're people and we're distracted and, and there's grace for people like you and me in our lives and these things that we share in common that are difficulties for us in prayer. But I think we have to know that the end of all things is near. So we need to be alert and, and we need to be of sober mind so that we could pray. Because this is a first thing and it's an important thing for us. And, and to be people who pray with a different level of intentionality and a different level of passion and a different level of focus. And so there's these verses that come up in different places, and I just wanna share three of them with you real quick that speak to prayer, to the kind of prayer that maybe we're being called to as we engage the beginning of this year. So the first verse is in Colossians chapter four, verse two. It's, instead of just like your only prayer being the one that you mumble off to sleep or or being people who just who get lost in distraction when we're trying to pray. Listen to these words. Devote yourself to prayer. Like be committed to this. Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. In Ephesians chapter six, verse 18, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 17, Pray without ceasing. Like this, is, this is a call to, to being fully engaged in our prayers, to being fully engaged in the conversation that we're having with our Heavenly Father, to being fully engaged with, with what it looks like for us to be people who pray, to pray with full engagement. So if you make your way through the Bible and you're looking at different verses that talk about prayer and talk about why we ought to pray and why we ought to be fully engaged in our prayer life, like there's, there's a lot of different reasons for all that. And I'm gonna let you kind of sort through that and do that study on your own. It'd be fascinating for you if you wanted to do that. I wanna spend a little time together today with, with one of the events that happened in Jesus' life that happened with his first followers 
that really is an illustration for us about prayer and why this kind of focused, passionate, paying attention, fully engaged prayer is, is of value for us and for the people who are around us. So this event happened on the night that Jesus suffered, like the beginning of the cross event. So after they have the, the Last Supper communion time where we just experienced of Jesus and his followers go out to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is in Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 36. So Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. So he took Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee, that was James and John, he said, took Peter and James and John along with him, and Jesus began to be sorrowful and troubled, because again, he knows what's coming, the cross is right in front of him, and so, so he is sorrowful and troubled, and then he said to them, to his followers, my soul's overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. I'm, I, am, I am struggling right now. I am going through it. You stay here and keep watch with me. And he went a little farther and he fell on his face to the ground and he prayed, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. So we have no idea how long this prayer lasted. It lasted longer than just what takes us to read it and we know that because Jesus returned to his disciples and he found them asleep. So somewhere between, I am, in, I am in desperate trouble, will you stay awake and watch and pray with me? And him walking a little bit to have a conversation with his, these guys fell asleep, they fell asleep. So Jesus wakes them up, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Like just, just a little bit of time, couldn't you just keep watch with me for an hour? And he asked Peter, and he says, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And Jesus went away a second time and he prayed, my father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. Like we know that, like we know that feeling, right? You know that experience in your own life, you know what it's like. He found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So. He left them and went away once more and he prayed the third time saying the same thing and then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? And he's woken them up, this is like three different times, he wakes them up and, and then you know what happens next. If you, if you know the story, you know what happens next. What happens next in the story is Jesus' betrayer comes and the disciples abandon Jesus and they scatter. And, and it's this, this moment of spiritual failure. It was spiritual failure. They, they, they ran away. They ran away. They ran away from Jesus and they split from each other. Like they, they left their leader and they left their comrades. Like they, they just, they ran. It's this moment of huge spiritual failure. And then Peter, if you know what comes next from that, Peter, as the evening unfolded, as the night unfolded, Peter denied Jesus three different times. Three different times, somebody looked at Peter and, and said, hey, you're with him, aren't you? And he's like, no way, no way, I'm not with him. Three different times. And I think we're supposed to make a connection here in the story. Three different times Jesus woke these guys up. Three different times Jesus said to them, hey, I need you to stay awake and pray. I need you to stay awake and pray. Watch and pray so you don't fall into temptation. And, and the story and those conversations about stay awake and pray seem to be aimed at Peter. And Peter's the guy who three different times, he denied Jesus. I think we're supposed to make a connection there and I think we're supposed to wonder a little bit about what would have happened. What would have happened if, if they had stayed awake? Like how, might, how might this have unfolded differently for, for Peter and for James and John and the other followers of Jesus if, if they'd have stayed awake? In prayer, how might that have been different? And not just, from a historical perspective, not just from the alternate side of history, but we're supposed to think about that from, from our point of view. How, how would it be different in my life if I were, if I were the kind of person who, who stayed awake and prayed? If I were the kind of person who, who prayed with, with focus and energy and, and passion, how, 
how would my life be different and, and how would I be different as a follower of Jesus and how would my relationships and the people I follow Jesus with, like how would it be different for, for me and for them? Right? How, how would my life be different if I were the kind of person who stayed awake when I pray? And, and when I read through this account, like you know what I resonate with? You know what resonates with me the most in all of this? When Jesus looks at those guys when he wakes them up and he says, hey, Spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. I know, like everything I'm talking to you about, everything like I know this already. You know this already. If you're if you're a church person, there's I've said nothing that you don't know yet. We all have the same experience. What we really hold on to in all of that, what we're what we're deeply connected to, is this statement: the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, and so, what I'd like to spend the rest of our time together on is is how do we address that, yeah, the Spirit is willing, I'm, I am for this, I am for, you were before it, but you were for it before you walked in here today, you know? So this isn't, this isn't anything new that we're for. The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, and so how could, how could we get ahead on this? How could we take some next steps on these things today? And so I wanna talk about how we could overcome some of our weaknesses and how we could live as people who are alert so that we could pray. All right, so just, I'm gonna talk about three different areas where we need to be alert. The first one is to be spiritually alert. This is having your spiritual antenna up and we'll start with that word humility. Over and over and over again in the Bible, one of the things that God says is God says that he is opposed to people who are proud and he gives grace to people who are humble. And, and so for us to cultivate in humility in our lives, Jesus at the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, he says, hey, blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Like if you wanna participate in God's kind of stuff and God's kind of economy in your life, then you gotta recognize that you don't have what it takes. You need to receive. You need to receive. So humility is the starting point of all this, just to recognize before God, I don't have what it takes. The spirit's willing, the flesh is weak. I can't overcome, like if it's just on me, if I'm left to myself, I'm gonna be the guy who always falls asleep and who needs to be woken up. If I'm gonna be able to get through this, then that means that I, I have to receive what God wants to give me and he wants to move towards you and no matter how many times you felt like a failure at this before, no, how, how, no matter how many times you've fallen asleep in prayer, like it could be different for you. It could be different for us because, because God's moving towards us and he has something new and he has something better and he wants, us to, he wants us to win in this and so for us to have a spirit of humility that says, hey, I, I need help in this. And continuing that spirit of humility to say, hey, I don't understand everything there is about prayer. I don't understand everything there is about prayer. You have questions, I have questions. There's some things that I, like, there's just some stuff I can't figure out. I can't figure out how an all-knowing, all-powerful God who has declared the end from the beginning, how my prayer fits into all that. I cannot figure that out. And so humility, like this is just for me, humility says I don't, there's some stuff that I cannot understand, so I'm gonna embrace faith. And I'm gonna say, you know what? My prayer matters. Like I'm gonna believe that prayer changes things even though I cannot fully explain it. I'm gonna be glad that I can't fully understand who God is and the way he works things out. If I could fully understand who God is and work, the way work, things work out and the way he works things out, he, that's not the God for me. Right, if you fully understand him and if you got him figured out, like he's not God, he's just somebody else that you're peer with. He's over and above me and I'm gonna live, okay, I'm gonna live, all right, I don't understand all this stuff. And I'm gonna embrace with faith that my prayer matters, that he's called me to pray, that, that prayer, being alert in prayer, like that this is so important that I'm willing to say it's gonna be, time is short, <laughs> time is short, my time is short, so I've gotta spend time in prayer. And I'm, just, I'm gonna live with faith, with humility, and with faith, to be spiritually alert. Those things will cult cultivate spiritual alertness in our lives. And then physically alert, physically alert. So, so to help us stay physically alert, here's some things to think about. The first is your posture. Right, so in church, the posture that most of us take for prayer is bow our head and close our eyes, right? So if you're really tired, that is probably not the posture to stay alert in prayer. That's the posture to mumble off into sleep. If I'm, gonna, if I'm really tired, bow my head and close my eyes is not a physical posture that works. There are other postures. It's okay to pray standing up. It's okay to pray walking around. It's okay, it's okay to pray 
the way you need to posture yourself so that you can stay awake and you can stay alert in your prayer. And so to find a physical posture that works for you, that helps you be able to be alert in your prayer life. Place, to find a place that is a distraction-free or as distraction-free as you can get in your environment. Sometimes we, like we set ourselves up for failure when you've got your laptop open and you've got your phone on and all the notifications are turned on, all those things, and we're all trained. As soon as we hear a ding, we look at that and pay attention to that thing. That conspires against us. And so to create as distraction-free of an environment as we can create so that, so that we can dial in and we can focus. So, so have a physical posture, we can stay awake and alert and to find a place where where we can be as free from distraction as, as we're able to in our lives. The time frame of all of this, if you do reading, especially in the new year when it talks about a new you, it talks about the importance of, if you're thinking about your physical health, I read an article today that talked about the importance of, of when you work out. Like when you work out matters, and we all have, based on our rhythms, we all have different windows in our day of when we're gonna get the most benefit from our exercise routine. And if you've read about productivity in the work environment, you've heard about the rhythms in my life. There's, there are times in the day, there are windows in the day when I am more productive, when I am more, I'm paying more attention, I am more focused, and I'm able to get more done. And so this is when you take the most important parts of your work. What if, what if we figure out when we're most alert, when we're most productive, and we put prayer in that window too. If that, that, would, that would raise the value of prayer in our lives and be the faith statement that, hey, if this is the first thing, time's short, I'm gonna be alert and sober-minded so that I can pray. This is, I gotta put it in this window. I gotta put it in this window, and so I'm gonna put it in this time frame so that so that I'm at my best, I'm giving my best to this most important thing. And then the last thing, the last bullet that I have there for you is just is a plan, to have a plan. And, and it could be, it's your plan, it's not my plan. So you could, you, could, you could pray the Lord's Prayer, like pray through the Lord's Prayer. And so when you have a plan, it keeps your, it keeps your mind engaged and keeps you dialed in and focused. You could have a prayer list in front of you. You could have one thing that you're gonna be praying about and it's a thing that matters to you. It matters to you, it matters to you that God's gonna, he's gonna see that and he's gonna hear your prayer and he's gonna step in and he's gonna respond to that, to have a plan in place so that you're not just kinda coming to your prayer time with, I don't have a lot here, or I know there's a lot I need to be praying about but I'm not really sure, like this, we set ourselves up, we set ourselves up for failure if, if we come to prayer just to just kinda mumble off into it, and so to have a plan might be something that would really be helpful for you to be physically alert when you're in your prayer time, because time is short, and we put this at the top so that we can pray. And then the last way to be re- alert is to be relationally alert, to be relationally alert. Let me take you back to what prayer is. Prayer is talking with your heavenly Father. It's, it's not running through a list and, and speaking it towards the ceiling. It's not bowing my head and closing my eyes and saying this thing that I've said over and over again. Prayers, prayers talking with your heavenly father. And, and you, can, you can have a list that you, that you say to your heavenly father and you can have a prayer that you say day in, day out to him. It's engaging with him. Prayer is talking with my heavenly father. And so having your relational antenna up and paying attention and, and so being awake one of the beautiful things about prayer, one of the promises that the Bible makes to us, is that God the Holy Spirit is praying for us and with us. Um, I love in Romans chapter eight where it promises that the Holy Spirit, if you're a believer in Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And, and when you don't know how to pray, he prays for you. That, that's an astounding thing to me. That, and I just believe that I don't ever know how to pray. <laughs> if, if God's gonna direct my prayer or if I'm gonna be on my own, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna believe that I don't really know how I should pray. He knows how I should pray and he'll pray for me. And he, Jesus said when the Spirit comes, when he comes to you, he'll, he'll be your guide. And he'll guide you into all that's true. And, and so he will guide you in your prayers and he will pray for you and he will lead you so to be awake to what God the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you is praying for you and what he's praying with you. 
And so, so to be paying attention, relationally paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is doing, to be listening to what God is saying back to you. Prayer's talking with, not talking to, prayer's talking with my Heavenly Father. And so to be, to be awake to and listening for what he is saying back to you. He speaks, he speaks in prayer. If you'll give him time, and if you'll give him space for the things that you're praying about for you or the things that you're praying about for someone else, the things that you're praying about that are going on in our world, if you'll give him time and if you'll give him space, if you'll listen for what he has to say, he speaks in prayer. It's, it's so you and I have this great opportunity to be relationally alert, knowing that we're not just talking to, but we're talking with our Heavenly Father and, and listening for what he is saying back to us. And, and when he speaks, like when you hear him speak back to you, it's this, it's this, it's this beautiful thing. And, and it encourages further listening in our lives because he speaks to us when we're praying and talking with him. And so to be relationally alert, listening for what your father wants to say back to you. And then that last one there on the list of watching for ways that God is answering your prayers. Your prayer matters. It does, your prayer matters. You don't, like we don't have to have it all figured out and we don't have to know. The call to prayer is consistent throughout the Bible. The stories in the Bible, the people who devote themselves to prayer, their prayers change the world. And your prayer matters. God sees your prayers, God, God sees you, he hears your prayers, he listens, he responds, he comes, he comes to meet you in your prayers and he comes to invade himself into, into the circumstances that, that you're engaged in. And, and so to watch for how he is answering your prayers is fuel to the fire, like it is so encouraging to know that I've been, like I was praying about this this morning and this afternoon, this thing happened. And sometimes it's a full on 110% answer and sometimes it's like, okay, it, something's moving. I, I, I'm praying about this thing with me or with somebody else or for us. Like, and, and this happened. Hey, that's God at work. And to, and to watch for God at work and to keep track of how God's at work in your life and listening to your prayers is a huge encouragement to, to take next steps as a person who prays. And so, so here we are at the beginning of the year. This is week one of a six-week series. And so what, what I'm asking from you is that you, would, like, that you would lean into this, that we would lean into this, into prayer together, not just to know it's important, but to be people who pray. And so if you're new, to just say, hey, for the next six weeks, like just go with us for this next six weeks. Every day, I'm gonna spend a few minutes praying. If you're new to this, just a few minutes. A few minutes of paying attention to, to my prayer and to, to being a person who prays. If you've been around for a little while, maybe a few more minutes or, or with a little more focus, a little more in attention, a little more intensity, but to be a person who, who dials because time is short because time is short and we need to be alert and of sober mind so that we can pray because our prayers matter. And so we're gonna, we're gonna lean into this together and as we're leaning into it, could we be people who talk together about what we're learning? So in, in your small group, in your friend group of Christian people, to talk about what you're learning as you, as you pay attention and pray, you're gonna learn some stuff. And so to talk about what you're learning, to talk about what you're praying for, to talk about the way that you're seeing God answer your prayers so that we're, so that we're encouraging each other to take our next steps in prayer. Can we lean in this together? And as we lean into this, we're gonna see God step into our lives, the lives of the people that we love, our community and beyond in ways that, that we can't imagine right now, but we're gonna celebrate as he does. So I'm gonna pray for us in just a second. And then after I pray, the band is gonna sing a song. And this, this prayer moment and this, this song that they're gonna sing over you is really just, it's, it's your chance to say, yeah, I'm gonna lean into this. Not saying it to me, saying it to God. And just and saying to him, hey, my, my spirit is willing, my flesh is weak. Would, 
would you help me in this? I'm, time is short. Yes, the time is short. Alert, sober-minded. Yes, alert, sober-minded. So that I could pray. So that I could pray. I could be a person who actually prays. So would you bow your head and close your eyes with me and let me, let me pray for us and then the band will sing. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this call to prayer. Thank you for the privilege that we have of, of approaching you, of engaging you, engaging with you. Thank you that, you that you see and you hear and you know and you care about people like us, that our prayers matter. It's beyond us. We don't pretend to fully understand that, but we're saying yes to it, and so we're gonna lean into it. Would you call us to prayer? For those of us who are participating in this service, people who are here in this room, the people who are online, may we experience this nudge, this call from you for a few more minutes, a little more focus. What you would, what you would ask from us and what you would give to us. Would you call us forward in this? And Jesus, this great privilege comes to us through you. And so with gratitude, we say that we love you and we're praying these things in your name. Amen. Thank you.